Welcome back to part 3 of Understanding Double Layers. In the first two parts we explored the main concepts of double layers and how experiments led to a circuit approach to understanding these plasma phenomena. In this part we will examine how double layers could help explain a variety of different phenomena. The basic properties of a plasma are likely to be the same in different regions of cosmic plasmas. The linear dimensions of plasma vary by 10 to the 27 in three jumps of 10 to the power of 9. From the laboratory plasma at 0.1 meters, we move to the magnetospheric plasmas, which are approximately 10 to the 8 meters, then to interstellar plasmas at 10 to the power of 17 meters, and up to the Hubble distance of 10 to the 26 meters. Results from laboratory plasma physics and in situ measurements by spacecraft in the magnetospheres make sophisticated plasma diagnosis possible out to the reach of spacecraft. Plasma at larger distances should to a large extent be investigated by extrapolation. This is possible because of our increased knowledge of how to translate results from one region to another. And as Alfane goes on to state, the necessary paradigm transition leads to theories based on experiment and observations. It started in the laboratory in the 1960s. In situ measurements in the magnetospheres caused a similar paradigm shift there. This can be depicted as a knowledge expansion, which so far has stopped at the reach of spacecraft. The results of laboratory and magnetospheric research should be extrapolated further out. When this knowledge is combined with direct observations of interstellar and intergalactic plasma phenomena, we can predict that a new era in astrophysics will begin, largely based on the plasma universe model. And so, here we are nearly 40 years after Alfane wrote this paper, and it really feels like we have not moved much further forward. So let's move on and examine some examples of cosmic double layers. Let's start with the auroral circuit. This is by far the best known example. It is derived from a large number of measurements in the magnetosphere and in the ionosphere which were pioneered by the Applied Physics Laboratory at John Hopkins University. Smuda and Armstrong observed that the average magnetic field in the magnetosphere had superimposed on its transverse field which they interpreted as due to hydromagnetic waves. Inspired by a discussion with Faulthammer, Dessler suggested that the transverse field components instead indicated electric currents essentially parallel to the magnetic field lines. This means that it was Dessler who discovered the electric current which Birkeland had predicted. Dessler called them Birkeland currents. In the auroral current system, the central body maintains a dipole field. B1 and B2 are magnetic field lines from the body. C is a plasma cloud near the equatorial plane, moving in the sunward direction producing an electromotive force which gives rise to a current in the circuit C1, A1, A2 and C2. The circuit may contain a double layer, which is essentially used for accelerating auroral electrons. The energy is transferred from C to the double layer, and is not caused by magnetic reconnection. It is a property of the electrical circuit. Heliospheric currents. Hannes Alfane viewed that the Sun acts as a unipolar inductor, producing a current which during odd solar cycles goes outwards along the axis in both directions and inwards in the equatorial plane. The current closes at a large distance. The exact location is currently unknown. The equatorial current layer is often very inhomogeneous. Further, it moves up and down like the skirt of a ballerina. In even solar cycles, the direction of the current is reversed. By analogy with a magnetospheric circuit, we may expect that the heliospheric circuit to have double layers. They should be located at the axis of symmetry, but perhaps preferentially in the solar cycles when the axial current is directed away from the Sun. They should produce high energy electrons and synchrotron radiation, which should make them observable. Since Hannes wrote this paper, we have made many more measurements and in particular both Voyager probes have now left the heliosphere and detected signals from beyond this. When you examine some of the radio sources they detected, you find that they do indeed detect a strange radio source which is coming from the region above the axis of the Sun. 
Could these be from the sun's double layers? Double radio sources. Hannes Alfane felt that if you replace the rotating magnetized sun in the heliospheric circuit by a galaxy, which is also magnetized and rotating, then there would be a similar current system, but magnified by about nine orders of magnitude. Inside the galaxy, the current may flow in the plane of symmetry, similar to the current sheet in the equatorial plane of the sun. The EMF which is derived from the galactic rotation is applied to two circuits in parallel, one to the north and one to the south. In the magnetosphere, the current flowing out from the ionosphere produces double layers at some distance from Earth. Because of the similarity of the plasma configuration, we may expect double layers at the axis of a galaxy, and a large release of energy in them. These locations may coincide with double radio sources found in some active galaxies. There is a flow of thermal electrons to the layer from the outside and when passing a series of double layers the electrons are accelerated to very high energies. Hence a beam of very high energy electrons is emitted from the double layer along the axis towards the central galaxy. In analogy with the current in the magnetotail, the current in the equatorial plane of a galaxy may also produce double layers, which may be associated with large releases of energy. Although the electrons are primarily accelerated in the direction of the magnetic field, they will be scattered by magnetic inhomogeneities and spiral in such a way that they emit synchrotron radiation. The accelerated electrons will be more like an extremely hot gas than a beam. With increasing distance from the double layer, the electrons will spread and their energies and hence their synchrotron radiation will decrease. Ions passing the double layer in the outwards direction will be accelerated to the same energy as the electrons. Because of their larger rest mass, they will not emit much synchrotron radiation. It should be stressed that just as in the magnetosphere and in the laboratory, the energy released in the double layer derives from the circuit energy and is transferred to it by electric currents, which essentially consists of relatively low energy particles. There is no need for a beam of high energy particles to be shot out from the central galaxy. On the contrary, the central galaxy may be bombarded by high energy electrons which have obtained their energy from the double layer. Solar prominent circuit and solar flares. The circuit consists of a magnetic flux tube above the photosphere. Anas Alfane thought the generator in the circuit was due to a whirl motion in the sunspot magnetic field. When the generator output increases, the circuit energy can be dissipated in two different ways. When the current density surpasses a critical value, an exploding double layer is produced in which most of the circuit energy is released. This causes a solar flare. Under certain circumstances, the electromagnetic pressure in the current loop may produce a motor which gives rise to a rising prominence. Magnetic substorms. According to Bostrom, an explosion of the transverse current in the magnetotail gives an attractive mechanism for producing a magnetic substorm. Bostrom showed that an equivalent magnetic substorm circuit is a way of presenting the substorm model. The onset of a substorm is due to the formation of a double layer, which interrupts the crosstail current so that it is redirected to the ionosphere. Currents and double layers in interstellar space. As it is relatively easy to measure magnetic fields, it is natural that the first description of the electromagnetic state of interstellar and intergalactic space is based on magnetic field descriptions. However, as no one claims, at least not explicitly, that the magnetic fields are curl-free, we must have a network of currents. As investigations of double layers require explicit pictures of electric currents, it is essential to apply these pictures. Filamentary structures that have been observed for some time and may be observed everywhere where sufficiently accurate observations can be made. Many of these filaments may produce double layers and some of these may explode. These explosions may account for X-rays and gamma ray bursts. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.